Hello, I'm Joseph Ragnus, filling in for Alan Podcotter, and you're listening to Call Talk for the 8th of February, 2023. Today's topic is the future of hiring. Innovative approaches for recruiting and re- retaining top agents. If you are listening live, we invite you to be a part of the show and ask questions. Here's how you do it. Email me at calltalk at freshmarkportal.com. I want to remind everyone that all of our shows are archived and available to listen to at freshmarkportal.com at any time of the day. And now, I would like to introduce you to the host of Call Talk, Bruce Belfiore. Thank you, Joseph, and welcome back to Call Talk, everyone. Okay, good. Well, we'll be talking about the future of hiring, innovative approaches for recruiting and retaining top agents. And I'll be uh, interviewing Ravine Shah. Ravine is the founder and CEO of Hello Hire, a software platform that helps contact centers hire agents. Uh, Ravine is a serial tech entrepreneur on a mission to expedite and humanize the hiring process. Welcome to the show, Ravine. Thanks, Bruce. Okay. Well, you know, we're hearing constantly that recruitment and retention are a top challenge and priority for the contact center and and this industry in general. You know, what's going on? In your opinion, uh, what's changed? Well, the biggest change is the shrinking labor pool. And I hate to say it, but it isn't new and it's not going away. The labor shortage that we're experiencing right now wasn't caused by the pandemic. It's a growing problem for over a decade. There was a study that showed that every year, the percent of people voluntarily leaving the workforce has been steadily increasing year after year. And when the pandemic started in 2020, you know, people held on to their jobs and and there was so much uncertainty that the trend kind of stopped. But as soon as we hit 2021, the -hmm. trend continued. And that labor shortage, um, like the labor shortage isn't the only problem. But it's one reason why we're seeing fewer candidates or qualified candidates coming through the pipeline. Yeah, it's very interesting, really. The, the, your point about the pandemic issue being uh, sort of an underlying factor, but there's a, a secular trend that's really overlying the whole thing and that's uh, or overlaying the whole thing and that's uh, pushing uh, the problem to the fore. And what are some of the other reasons that you see? There, there are many, unfortunately, but another big reason is the competition. Uh, you know, we used to compete with other contact centers, but now the competition is other industries, new working models, new life priorities. Everything is different now. Mm, no, that's for sure. That's for sure. And, and speaking of different, uh, what are some of the changes that have made recruiting more difficult? You know, what are contact centers experiencing that you've seen? Well, we talked about the first challenge, which is getting fewer qualified candidates applying. You know, people are still applying, but it's becoming much harder to figure out who's really interested in the job and who's qualified. You know, in the world we're in right now, candidates just click apply, 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 it's a volume game for them because they know that 95 to 98% of the time, they're never going to hear back from an employer. And so what happens is as, you know, as businesses and employers, we get a ton of applicants, but it's hard to understand who is really interested in the job. And further, it's harder to reach them. Uh, Most contact centers are starting the process with a phone screen, but these days, who picks up the phone from a number they don't recognize? I rarely do. And I'm from the generation that came from analog phones and answering machines with cassettes in them. Do you remember those? No, no, Ravine. I, I, I'm way too young to, to have seen those. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, we, we had, uh, I mean, I think that was hilarious where, you know, you're just recording and re-recording and re-recording on that analog cassette uh, those were the days. Um, but this, this new generation, uh, they're using their phones for texting and video calls. Audio calls are awkward and a thing of the past for this generation. 
And the other big challenge that we're seeing is ghosting. And, and so this is something that's pretty new. Uh, when you finally get in touch with a candidate and schedule an interview with them, 50% of the time, they don't show up. You know, yikes, that's incredibly painful, but something I've heard from a good number of, of centers at this point. And obviously, you know, for the, us who've been around for a while, it has to do, you know, we, we think of it in terms of both uh, problems that it causes for us in our processes and also just in terms of common courtesy, whatever happened to that. <laughs> but anyway, uh, what do you think the reason is behind it? Yeah, no, I, I feel the pain, but the, the no-shows are happening because you're too slow or we're, we're, we're not fast enough. And, and candidates today are exploring multiple opportunities. And again, like we said, it's, the competition is fierce. And so the, the person who makes, you know, the person who's the quickest to make a decision will win. And mm. if that's not you, then you're going to keep getting ghosted because the Candidates have they've moved on. They've taken another job. They've they've been interviewing, and and again, uh, the quickest person uh, wins, and and the one that's not fast is getting ghosted more and more. And so, it's painful, but it's the new normal. And the only path forward is to adapt, and and that means hiring in a way that works with today's labor market, today's job seeker, and things of today's market, which are, you know, ghosting and you know, fewer qualified candidates coming through the pipeline. Yeah, so, um, you know, unfortunately, we have to adapt to these new ways of doing things in order to get the best candidates. So, okay, so now we're really getting into some good stuff that uh, I think our audience wants to hear more about, get your opinion on. Because how can contact centers adapt to this new normal and meet their hiring objectives? Uh, it's not just getting butts and seats, as we've always said, but we need to hire the right people who are the right fit for our companies and will do the best job possible in terms of, uh, you know, fitting into the contact function for our companies and projecting the right image and doing a great job. How do we do that? Well, I'm a tech guy, and we love to throw technology at the problem, but that's not the solution right now. We've got to actually start at the beginning. We need to be more human, and we need to change the way that we hire. Okay, interesting. So be more human, and I guess use the uh, platinum rule. You know, the old golden rule is do unto <laughs> others as you, know, you would have them do unto you. The platinum rule is do unto your others as they want to have it done, right? Mm -hmm. And so what you're talking about is really uh, adapting to the way your uh, labor pool, your potential labor pool wants to be handled or wants to be approached. So this is, this is very good. Well, what do you propose? Well, first of all, we need to make the entire process friendly, and fast. Hiring today is like sales, not like customer service. So mm -hmm. we need to reduce all the friction and do everything in our power to give candidates what they want as quickly as possible. And, you know, we can't expect candidates to fill out long application forms, upload their resume a thousand times, engage with a, a chat bot, complete psychometric tests, record themselves on, on video. Um, you know, these are all techniques that we've created to screen people out. But that is actually pushing the best candidates away. And I'm not saying that these are bad techniques. Like we definitely want to take our time and hire the right people. But you can't ask a candidate to jump through hoops until you've at least had a conversation with them. Okay. Um, I'm taking note of your comment that hiring today is like sales. Uh, and as we know, reducing friction in sales, which mm -hmm. is what you were just talking about, is extremely important to success. 
and I think something that's going to resonate with our our uh, listeners. And uh, you know, I, I'd like that really to sink in uh, for our audience for a minute, because uh, these are particularly important concepts in that period before the hook is in, right? So you're trying to uh, get the hook in for candidates who are going to be the kind that you really do want to bring into your center. Because uh, you can do all of the screening needed uh, at the right time, but schedule a conversation early is what you're saying so that you can get engagement in the process. Uh, so we're, we're really talking about sequencing here and maybe mm-hmm. re-looking at the sequencing we're doing now, which is a sequencing that may – uh, be aimed at trying to make the most efficient use of our time as employers, but may be causing us to be less successful in terms of getting the best candidates. Um, and, and this also fits in with changing attention spans, doesn't it, Ravine? Yes, Bruce. Attention spans are low, and people are used to short-form video. We've got a saying in the software software world, PDR, people don't read. And so <laughs> as em- I, I know. And, and so as employers, you know, we need to keep our job description short and to the point. We need to make them upbeat. We need to sell the opportunity. We need to share our unique culture and differentiators. But most importantly, we need to be consistent with the messaging and remember that the goal is actually to catch the interest of as many people as possible. Mm. Wow. Yeah. You know, I was just thinking about uh, the fact that, you know, make things uh, pithy to keep things short. Cause again, people don't read the PDR. I, I love that. That's the <laughs> truth. Um, you know, short text, short videos have greater impact these days uh, to be sure. And using these to get the hook in for people seeking an engaging culture that fits with their values is important. Uh, Because unfortunately, the glaze over (laughs) effect is true both for reading and for long videos. You know, people will just reject both. So we have to sort of get away from the thought that we have to pack as many words in there as possible to impress the potential employee with just how wonderful we are, our culture is, and the opportunity is, and figure out ways to pare down the communication time, the number of words, uh, the length of the video, so that we get the same impact into a, uh, a short as possible period of time. It goes right in with what you were talking about um, you know, with, with the uh, attention span. So uh, p- please tell us more about this. I think it's fascinating. Thanks, Bruce. Now, when we look at the biggest opportunity for hiring right now, it is to make a radical change. And we talked about sequencing, but, but really, if we take that one step further, it's really to get rid of resumes and screening and essentially invite every applicant to an interview right away. It's huh. it's a recruiting process. Yeah, it's a recruiting process called open interview hiring, and it works like magic. And the reason is when when you open up your interviews and you know your invitation of of people to to a conversation, you immediately know who actually wants the job, because the person who shows up. Uh, they are, they're serious. They want the job. And these days, that's already half the battle. Because again, when I mentioned that apply, 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 people aren't looking at the job description necessarily. They're looking at location and job title and, and just kind of applying everywhere. And so when someone actually goes the extra step of showing up to the interview, uh, that's, you know, that's half the battle. You've, you've got there. And, and now with a virtual interview, you can really get to know someone in a short amount of time without anyone having to travel. So you have this face-to-face interaction, you, you meet somebody, you learn what they're all about. Um, and, and at the end of the day, candidates, they're, they want to get interviewed. When, when you're applying for jobs, you know, what is a measure of success as far as a candidate goes? It's doing more work 
as a as a part of the application process, that's that's work. That's not a you haven't hit a milestone. But when you're invited to an interview, you've hit the next step. And so when you do that and, and you offer the candidate that, you motivate them to engage in your process and, and get things started. Mm -hmm. Now this uh, makes a lot of sense. Uh, in terms of the way you've described the market. In other words, there's a coherence between what you were saying earlier and what you're saying now in terms of what the um, objective and the solution has to be. And I can imagine that it's very disruptive, however, in the minds of a lot of our listeners. So there's going to be some in our audience who are saying to themselves, but, but Ravin, I want to take care of this initial screening before I take the time to interview people who might not be qualified. So what do you say to them? Well, I would first, <laughs> sorry, I would first say, how is that working for you? Um, if you're listening. <laughs> That's to right. The, I, I, well, not to be facetious, but like if you're listening to the podcast, my guess is that you're looking for something new, right? And I know it's scary because we are so conditioned into protecting our time because the time, our time is the most val our most valuable asset. And, you know, when you think about sort of um, the concept of interviewing everybody, it's daunting. Like it just, you, you know, you, you can't get around that concept of like having to invest all this time, but you know, you've got, there are ways to do it efficiently. There's technology that you can use today that, that helps. Um, and so really at the end of the day, I'm not saying to abandon screening, um, but all I'm saying is change the order in which you do it because you will find the right candidates that are interested in your job for you to meet um, and again, you can meet virtually, which is a much smaller time investment um, mm -hmm. and, and be able to make sure you're not losing out on the best candidates at the end of the day. Right, right. right. That's, good. That's good. And are there other challenges to this open interviewing uh, approach that you find? Uh, Absolutely. So open interviews have challenges like, okay, well, how are we going to schedule all of these interviews quickly and efficiently? And how are we going to make sure we're not wasting our time with no shows? But that's where software platforms like HelloHire come in. And so we automate screening, scheduling, and communication so that all recruiters have to do is meet candidates and do those interviews back to back. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, okay. So, so you meet a lot of candidates in a short period of time. I'm sure that there's a good organization of this, right? So that you're making sure your interviewers are scheduling into the time that they have at the right times of day uh, for your supervisors or your people in HR or however you do that, so that you've got it uh, fit in as best possible for efficiency purposes with your operation, um, th then what comes next? So, so in these short, quick, you know, virtual interviews, you've met a candidate, you've been able to assess their communication skills, their enthusiasm, and their commitment to the job. And so now you pick the ones that fit best for your company and then you move them forward in your process. And so now you can ask to do a psychometric test or an assessment or a second interview, um, you know, whatever you need as a part of your process to make sure that you're hiring great candidates. Um, you do that. That's the next step. And again, you, big concept, misconception, you don't have to hire everyone you meet. But by meeting more candidates earlier in the process, you end up with a wider pool of, of people to pick from. Right. And know, that's good. Go ahead. And, and to, to kind of continue on that path, you got to keep moving fast, right? And so, sure, you're going to do your next steps, but do them quickly and whatever it is, you know, make sure you get that offer letter out quickly because as soon as you find a good candidate, 
the chances are someone else is also considering them. And so make the move and, and fill those classes. Mm-hmm. Okay. No, very important stuff. And I, I was thinking one other thing that I remember from my, my own past and experience is that um, those interviews can be short, but just because they're short doesn't mean that they can't be highly impactful for the interviewee. And so we as managers who are probably managing the folks who are doing the interviews uh, need to make sure that our interviewers are good and they're properly trained and they have a good phone presence and they make people feel welcoming and welcomed and at ease. Right. And uh, in other words, if you make sure they love their interview, and that probably means it means that they <laughs> also love their interviewer, right? Uh, then they'll be more in love with the process that is being used uh, to to uh, to you know move them along. And so, you know, I think that's another thing just to keep in mind that uh, it's the old. Maya Angelou thing, right? People might not remember what you say or what you do, but uh, they'll always remember how uh, they made you feel. And if you bring that message across to your interviewers, that every time they start one of these short interviews, they reset, uh, put a smile on their face, even if they can't be seen or if they can be seen, but they do it in a way that uh, just makes the candidate feel comfortable and welcomed and all that sort of thing. And then if you don't want that candidate at the end of the day, um, that's that's fine. It, but it hasn't cost you any more to have a positive attitude toward that person. And it will help with word of mouth. In other words, if somebody mm-hmm. doesn't get uh, selected by you, you want them – it's not that you want people to feel badly, but you want them to have wanted – to be hired by you because they have a Great. good opinion of you, a good good uh, sense of your process and your people, right? A- absolutely. And, and it comes back to recruiting being like sales, right? We want to, you know, make sure we're leaving a good impression. And, and the timing might not be right. Maybe now is not the right time, but it might be – down the road and and starting those great relationships with more people and spreading that positivity that your brand and culture have are uh, critically important and and a great part of of the process as well. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, just as a side note here, uh, you should probably think about having a QA process with regard to your hiring interviews process and uh, have people listen to them and uh, be able to actually coach the folks who are doing the interviews so that they become more and more effective uh, and better and better at the interviewing process. Well, th- th- this has been fascinating. Is there anything else that you'd like to bring up, Ravine, before we uh, bring things to a close here? I'll just touch on one point that you just you know reminded me of right now, and I say this to everyone that, Every employer that is hiring, I say try going through your company's hiring process um, end-to-end so that you can feel what the experience is like for a candidate and empathize. Uh, I think everyone's eyes will, you know, get opened when they see what um, what they're doing and, and, you know, where there's room for improvement. But I, I definitely recommend to everyone, every leader, to go through their own hiring process. So. Um, yeah, and, and, you know, the, the candidate experience is the very first part of the employee experience, and we all know how important that is when it comes to retention and, and making sure we're creating a great place to work. And so it's got to start from the very beginning. And, and yeah, I just I always say just try your own process so you know what it's like for, for those coming through the door. Right, right. One of the things that I say is that, when it comes to processes and contact centers in general, uh, every season is a good time for spring cleaning. <laughs> in other words, going through, see how good are you at it and what could you do better? And then how can you measure that it's, in fact, uh, going better? Uh, and here, certainly, there would be ways of figuring out 
you know, how this process is bringing in better people. And, uh, you know, I, I would encourage people to follow through and find out, you know, which candidates uh, stay, which candidates do well uh, once they're hired, and which ones uh, end up getting promoted and all that kind of good stuff. Because those stats can validate the um, the value of the process and that you've used in order to bring in really good candidates. Um, thank you so much, Ravine. This has been great. I really appreciate it. Uh, do you have any final words before we toss things back over to Joe? No, Bruce, I, I, I appreciate you having me on the show and uh, giving me an opportunity to share a little bit about recruiting and hiring at the contact center. Thank you. Okay, great. Well, thank you for being on, Ravine. And uh, over to you, Joseph. Thanks again to Ravine and Bruce for their insightful discussion on today's show. Be sure to join us next month for another great show or look at our huge selection of archive shows and topics at benchmarkportal.com. Then click on Call Talk where you will find over seven seasons of the show. From all of us at Benchmark Portal, keep those headsets steady and your fingers ready. This has been Joseph Lagunas signing out and have a great day.